Hello everyone, welcome to the Charm Hub. So today we're going to have a lifestyle video and this is the first lifestyle video of the channel and the relevant topic that I can think of at the moment to take as a lifestyle video is regarding the COVID-19 pandemic itself. We all know India has been going through a tough phase to fight against this virus and all I can say is stay strong and be safe because it all starts within us as an individual itself. If you're going to follow a few easy steps, uh, yes, we can keep ourselves safe, our loved ones safe and the society safe from this virus. So stay safe and be strong one day. Yes, we would definitely fight against this uh, virus. And I also wanted to use my platform to bring the maximum awareness uh, to the people that I can regarding this topic. It is a very vast topic and all, almost all the uh, questions are important but we can't include everything in one video because it is going to be very long so I thought I would make uh, this video that is regarding uh, this uh, series into three parts so this is part one where we are going to talk about the COVID-19 virus a few steps that we have to follow in order to prevent the infection and also we're going to see into the questions regarding the vaccines as well so yes having said that let's get right ahead so today we have with us dr tom george who is a bangalore based technologist he is also a health motivator and a social media influencer so he has been following the developments of the covid 19 pandemic for the past one and a half years and also have been conducting webinars for the public on the covid 19 topics so he has agreed to share with us the information that he has from the medical and governmental sources so having said that, let's welcome Dr. Tom George. So good evening, Dr. Tom George. Welcome to this episode of the Charm Hub. Now let's move on to the first question. The first question that I really want to put forth that many of us are still unaware of is that what is the main difference between the new strain and the original COVID-19 virus? There are different variants of uh, COVID-19 virus. The variant that is widely reported from India is officially called B1617. The difference is that this variant has got a mutated protein spike. This has got more transmissibility and infectiousness. This is also said to be airborne. Common signs of the original variant of uh, COVID-19 virus is continuous cough, high fever and loss of smell and taste and of course lung infections. For the new variant, there could be irritation on the tongue and extreme dryness of the mouth. Also, conjunctivitis and a few other symptoms are also being reported. Yes, that is also another point that because the present a new strain is uh, has more chances of transmission than the old strain. So it is really important for us to follow the basic rules even more uh, seriously in order to keep ourselves uh, safe. So thank you, Tom George, uh, for answering that. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question is, uh, what are the measures that have to be taken to prevent the new strain from infecting us? As I said, this variant is highly transmissible and infectious. That is one reason India has seen a huge surge in COVID-19 cases in the recent months. In this case, as in the case of original COVID-19 virus, we have to still keep all the security measures like uh, keeping social distancing, wearing a mask, using hand sanitizer and going into quarantine if infected. Due to the high transmissibility and uh, uh, infectious, infectiousness of this virus, it is very important that we need to keep uh, social distancing while wearing a mask. It is even suspected that this virus is airborne. Staying at home and keeping a distance of six feet or more are the key things to do. Yes, I believe all the measures that we have been following uh, before is the same measures here. But yes, it should be taken a little more serious. Uh, to uh, prevent ourselves and keep ourselves uh, safe from this new strain because as uh, yes daughter has mentioned 
it is actually more transmissible. So we have to take things a little more seriously and follow the basic steps. These are the basic steps that we can follow. So please do follow these basic steps and keep yourself safe as well as uh, others and your loved ones safe. So yes, having said that, uh, let's move ahead to the next uh, question. So the next question is uh, that, uh, well, this is a myth, maybe a myth or a topic that has been going all around social media is that if you're going to uh, take in vitamin C, it's going to prevent the virus once and for all, or it's going to even prevent the virus from entering into our body. So will taking vitamin C prevent uh, us from getting COVID infection? Definitely not. There are a lot of such remedies doing rounds in social media. And this is one such thing. While vitamin C can improve your immunity power and resistance in general, it cannot stop the virus from infecting you. So keep getting a lot of vitamin C either through diet or supplement, but take all the precautions that are needed to keep the virus at check. Yes, so vitamin C is very important at this moment to improve the immunity because if we get struck by the virus, then it will be easier for our immune, immune system to fight against the virus. So to keep ourselves safe as well as to improve the immunity and the strength of our body, Yes, uh, taking vitamin C to the maximum is very important. So that's a very important point. Now, moving ahead to the next uh, question. So next questions, few questions are regarding the vaccines. Uh, so the first one is, uh, how effective are the vaccines against the new strain? As per the World Health Organization, all COVID-19 variants that have emerged so far do respond to all the available approved vaccines. Yes, so we can be at least grateful that uh, we at least have a vaccine uh, now because yes, in the uh, first stage, we do not have anything, but as of now we have vaccine. So we have another chance to keep ourselves safe. So yes, uh, another question that uh, most of us have and uh, yes, have to be answered is, what are the differences between COVID shield and Covaxin? Covaxin has been developed by Hyderabad-based Bharat Biotech International Limited in association with Indian Council of Medical Research and also with the National Institute of uh, Virology, Pune. Covishield has been developed by Oxford AstraZeneca Consortium and is being manufactured in India by Serum Institute of India. Covaxin contains an inactivated virus which is the traditional way of uh, making a vaccine, whereas Covishield has been prepared by using the viral vector method, which is totally a new, different technology. So, yes, as uh, Dr. Tom George has uh, said, Covaxin and Covishield. Covaxin is using the traditional way and Covishield is using the uh, virus sector. So, yes, that's the main uh, difference. Now, moving ahead to the next question that I think most of us will have and is kind of a little confused is that will I get COVID infection if I have just taken the first dose of a vaccination? Yes, you could because according to the developers of both these vaccines, the maximum immunity will be developed only after about four weeks of uh, receiving the second dose. So yes, uh, that's another point that we shouldn't uh, take into as a myth is that we've taken the first dose so we are safe. We are not going to get infected by the virus. That's not true. We have to wait for the second dose to keep ourselves safe. And also after second dose, after a one month period, only then we can even consider some protection for ourselves from the vaccine. So please uh, take care of that. And uh, yes, vaccination has its own uh, benefits and uh, rules to be specified. So accordingly, do take uh, care when you're getting vaccinated. So having said that, let's move ahead with the next question. So the next question is, yes, what is the gap required between the first and the second dose for both the vaccines? Because first, uh, the rule was like, okay, only one month gap is required. But now actually it has become like not one month, the period should be more than a month. So what is the exact gap and the relevant gap that we have to give 
between both the vaccines. It used to be a minimum of 28 days between the doses for both the vaccines. However, the government has recently revised it to be at least 12 weeks for COVID shield and there is no change in the 28 days gap for Covaxin. Okay, so that's another point to be uh, kept in mind. Now going ahead, if I get infected after receiving the first dose, when can I receive the second dose? As per the current official guidance, there should be at least a gap of four to eight weeks to receive any of these vaccines after recovering from a COVID infection. Since these guidelines could change based on the results of latest medical research, please always do check with your doctor for latest guidance. Okay, so the next question is, should I wait the, for the different brands of vaccines that are coming to India, like the Russian vaccine Sputnik? No, you don't have to wait since the availability will be limited to the import quantity and the speed of distribution, though its distribution is supposed to start anytime soon. In fact, it is more important to get vaccinated as soon as possible with the available vaccines to efficiently reduce the risk of getting COVID-19 infection. The Russian developer of a Sputnik vaccine claims an efficiency of 91.6 without unusual side effects. However, Covishield and Covaxin are supposed to give high efficient efficacy as well. Yes, so uh, once you get a chance or your slot for any of the vaccinations which is available in India, Covishield or Covaxin, just uh, get it done. Do not wait uh, for uh, any other vaccine or do not make it delay because it's really important for us to improve our immunity and also at least reduce the infection from uh, striking us. So get your vaccination done as soon as possible. So the next question is, um, now young health workers who are below 45 of age often get Covishield nowadays because uh, Covaxin, yes, the non-availability of Covaxin. So because of that, most of them are getting, who is below 45 years is getting Covishield. Now, what is the difference if a youngster takes Covishield rather than Covaxin? In my understanding, both these vaccines are equally effective. So, as per the government agencies, there is no appreciable difference between these two vaccines as it is based on the available data and the results of clinical trials done so far. Yes, so uh, there's no much big difference between these two vaccines. So, whatever you get first, get it done. So, the another question is that I must say another problem that most of us are facing and especially India and worldwide is facing is that Certain people, even after getting vaccinated, are getting seriously affected by COVID-19 virus. Why is this happening? Vaccines may not give 100% result to all the people all the time. A small percentage of people who are already vaccinated could get infected with the COVID-19. But the good news is that generally such cases may not result in complications. So it is very important to get vaccinated since it gives you a good amount of protection. Yes, that's true because it all, it all depends on each individual and doesn't mean that if you get vaccinated 100% sure we won't get infected. So it just helps to uh, build our immunity uh, more. So yes, that's another point that we have to keep in mind and keep ourselves safe. So the next question is, what is the difference between the vaccines that is available in India and other vaccines that are available uh, abroad? Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Sputnik, Moderna and Sinopharm are some of the well-known vaccines that are approved for use abroad. Different vaccines are produced different, by different technologies that mainly fall under four categories. Whole virus, protein subunit, viral vector and nucleic. Despite of the difference in technologies, these are all approved for use as vaccines in most of the countries abroad on the results of human trials. Okay, so that's another good point that you have to keep in mind. 
So we have come to the end of this part one, the questions regarding uh, how to prevent this uh, virus as well as about vaccination. We have come to the end of those questions of this part one. So thank you, Dr. Tom George, for the information you shared with us uh, today. At the same time, I would want to mention one point is that there are some silver linings on the dark cloud of COVID-19 because the DRDO of India has come up with a new drug to treat the affected COVID-19 patients, which is called as the 2DG, that is 2-deoxy-D glucose. So hope this makes a big difference once the trials are concluded. So this is part one where we had uh, asked few questions and Dr. Tom George had shared his answers regarding how we can prevent this virus as well as few questions regarding the vaccines as well. Now in part two, that is the follow up video, uh, we are going to uh, put forth few questions and Dr. Tom George is again uh, going to join us in part two. So the main topic would be regarding if we get infected from this virus, what should we do? So the steps that we have to take when we are getting infected from this virus. So that would be part two. So till then, yes, stay safe and do take care and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Just hit the icon that pops over here to subscribe and also the bell icon beside it so that you would get a notification every time I put up a new video. So having said that, do Take care and stay safe. See you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Take care.